Okay, once we get set up here, we're going to do our value sketch. Okay, I'm going to use the Identi pen here with the fine tip on it. I'll put that on the back. I always like to put the cap on the back because I'll drop it and forget about it. Okay, let's start breaking this composition down into some simple shapes here. Okay, like this. Okay, this will be my cloud formation there. Okay, here we go. This will be this will be the. There we go. So that's my background. Okay. Once I get my background established, then I can go in and I can define the cloud section in there. Okay. Now, let's uh, uh, real real fast. Let's establish the foreground here, like this, like that. It's very simple. These shapes here. Okay. Once we have that shape, now we can come in here and we can start breaking up in our middle ground. We're going to put our middle ground shape in in between here and here. Okay, we've divided the sections. We have a design factor, as you can see now, uh, with the clouds moving. I'm getting uh, some shadows here, but that's quite all right. Um, in the perfect world, it would be best not to have any light showing on here. But when you're outdoors, you, is, you can never find the most perfect uh, um, location to do this. So we're just going to have to just work with what we have here. Okay, now very simple, just be very simple here and come down here like that, down here, and just we're putting the top of the farmhouse like that, okay? And that's gonna come down here, okay? And that'll come down here. Now, there's certain things that I like to change in here. One of the things I will change here is I will not put that um, uh, chimney that goes up the gable end here. I want a nice white, so I'm gonna eliminate that, okay? What we need to do is, what we need to do is we need to uh, edit things out, because if we try to put everything there, we're gonna be here till the cows come home, and it's gonna look so overworked. What we want is we want something very, very simple and pleasing. Okay, there's a little dormer shed coming off over here. There's some foliage in front of that house there. Instead of that chimney coming off this uh, gable end here, what I'll do is I'll move it right back here, okay? Uh, if there's some and there's little areas, there could be little windows. I'm gonna try and make my windows smaller than they normally are because then that way they'll read much nicer on the page here. Okay, that comes all the way down. Now we have some little outbuildings here. That comes over like that and down here. Make these very quick. And what I want is I want just a simple shape. I have the barn here, so we're going to run the barn. It's up in scale-wise. It's a little bit, it's closer to us than the house, and so it will be the tallest thing in the composition here, in, in the middle ground. This tree area here, I'd much rather paint a tree than a whole bunch of barn, so don't be about that just put the simple shape here and it goes down like that and as you can see here that is a perspective that's the other side and that'll be dark right there okay this is all I need here now once I have it to here then I can start coming in here and I can put these in here now what I'm going to get here as versus there I will not get an exact replication I do not want an exact replication I want something from my heart something that says me Frankie Hayseed. This is what he saw in Boone. Okay, we're going to uh, break down. Now, I have a solid patch of uh, white area that goes over here. But what I want to do is I want to break off a little area so the viewing public can work in here. They can walk right through here, visually walk through here, and get back into the meat of the composition here. Okay, okay. now, once we have it to here, okay, there's all sorts of value pins that you can that you can purchase. Uh, there's Tomboy, there's Prismacolor, there's AD markers. I like the AD markers right here that I use here. They're uh, AD marker and they are um, made by Chart Pack. Okay, You can also uh, get these at Cheap Joe. Now what these are are value pins. Okay, This is a number three. Uh, the, the value pins come from 1 to 12. 1 being your lightest shade, 12 being your darkest shade. I like to use f four, four values plus the white of my paper, so I'll have five values, okay? I use a number three, a number five, a number six, and a number eight. And then plus I'll leave the white of the paper as my white area in the house structure. 
and there. Okay, so it's just these these four simple values, and the white of the paper. We should have a very striking, a very striking little composition. I'll start with a number three. Okay, and we're going to just and you just block these big areas in, like that. Okay, and what I'll do now this. Uh, the hillside back here, the middle ground, will be a darker value. So I'll wait and do that later. But what I'll do right now is I will put the number three in here. I need contrast right through all this, okay? And let's do that, just like that. Now coming down here, I'll just, I like these pins because of the point. You can cover a lot of area very quickly. Okay. Now for the roof, I will use that, and I will use this here too. Just very simple, okay? Now we're getting somewhere here. Let's, uh, here, there, that's our barn, and what I'll do is I'll do that, okay? So basically what we have done here, we've had there, okay? Now what I want to do next, I will go to a number six. So I've used a number three on the majority of the space here, okay? Now I'll go to a number six, and I will put this you can just see how much darker they are here, okay? Now, it pays to be a little diligent as you're coming down through here, okay? And let's just put all this together. Now, do you understand why I use the number three on, on some of this middle ground shapes, okay? We want to get, okay, well, I forgot to do this one. I need to come back and I, you know, there's a value on that outbuilding here, but what if I leave a white here and then I'll have a little white here? So I think I'm going to leave a white roof and I'll put a value on the walls. Oh, that's much better. See how pleasing this is here. I'll have a little bit of white here and on the main area of my white because what you will find when you leave white of your paper. I use transparent watercolor. I have no white paint. So what I have to do is I have to incorporate the white of the paper in my design. Okay, and as you're going to see here in a, in a few minutes, okay, you're going to see how nice the combinations work. Okay, once I have that done, okay, now down in the foreground here, you can see that these little areas here will be dark like this. Okay, so put them in, okay, and like that. Okay, and let's just put, I have no idea what that is, it's just a nice shape, okay. And just we can come in here and we can start breaking these shapes up, oh like that, okay. Now once we get it to here, okay, now as you can see here, I have the composition completed. I've had my areas that I want to showcase. Uh, as you can see, when you're out here, things change so quickly. Five minutes ago, this area was white, okay? And I want that white there. What I can do next is when I put my light source in, my light source is where is the sun shining from, okay? And it can either come from the left of your composition or from the right, this right here. And also, here's another little visual aid. Um, say you're out here and you want, okay, I'm looking at this and I'm going, okay, where can I get my best bang for my buck here, okay? Uh, I'm going to have the light coming this way. So if you want to give yourself a little reminder, just put that right on the edge here. Okay. Now, what you can do right with this little area here, uh, let's let's put the light source on next. Okay. What you need to do is you need to go to a number five. Okay. Here's the number five. You can see that's right on the pin. We're going to put a light source in. Okay. So basically, I've used a number three and a number six, and then a number five will be a light source. Our light source is our shadow. Okay. Okay, the light source will be coming this way as I put it here, okay? Okay, now there would be a shadow there, there would be a shadow here, and there would be a shadow here. And this whole side here would be in shadow, okay? And there would be a shadow under that roof, okay? The same thing applies here if there's a lot of repetition in sketching, okay? If there's a shadow here and the same, look at the repetition here and here, okay? Well, the shadow would be the same there, okay? Coming over here on the barn, that would be there, okay? And we could just do something like that. If you want to put a shadow on that side of the tree, well, by golly, just go right ahead and do it, okay? The same with here, okay? Let's get it the way we want it, okay? I like the simplicity of this. Okay, now once, now also too, if I leave this big area white in the corner here, 
What that is going to do is that's going to pull the viewer's eye off the page. You don't ever want to design anything or paint anything to where your design is will not contain the viewer's eye. So what I will do, I like this nice big white of what it was a few minutes ago. So I will run some shadows up here like this and I will get, watch your corners, okay? And what that does is that just makes this like that, okay? Okay, so in essence what I have done now is just three values and the white of the paper is I have designed my composition, okay? As you can see, I have some interesting areas. Now all I have to do next, I have one simple thing I have to do. And I have to come over here and I have to get a number eight, okay? This is my darkest value. Look up there in the composition and say, okay, where do I need just a really strong dark? Okay, I'll come here and there'll be on that dormer there and I will just put a dark here and let's have a dark under here and maybe just a little dark there. Be very careful with these darks here. Let's fill that in. Okay, that's all I'm going to do. The more I do here, the less it's, it's going to take away, the more it's going to take away from here, okay? But you have to have one or two little areas of some really super dark to tie everything else in. Okay, now, once we get to this here, in this area that you have here or over here, you could put, okay, uh, painting from, uh, okay, painting location. Right here, and then put mass, mass store. Boone. North Carolina. You can put here very sticky. There's a lot, very sticky. So that will tell you that once you re, once you come back to this, I can uh, put this on. Once I finish this, I don't have to draw, uh, paint it right now. I can just put this off here. Very sticky and hot. Okay. Put everything else here. If you want to use this area here for say like blue sky, white, whatever you want to do. Okay. And if you want to sign it, well be very be very proud of what you do and put your name on there. And what I like to do with my sketches, I like to date them. Okay. So there. Okay. Now, if I do not have the opportunity to paint this, okay then I can uh, just go on and I can do me another sketch. What I like to do is I like to find one location to where I can paint 360 degrees. So I'm not having to move all the time. You can move with the sun, okay? As the sun moves across the sky, then you can move your board. I can paint this here, I can paint this here, I can paint this here and this here, okay? So with just one setup, because it, it takes a lot of energy to set this up, so what we have to do is we have to um, get the most bang for our dollar here, okay? Once you have your, your, your drawing completed the way you would like it, okay? Do not overwork it, okay? Simplicity is your, the best advice I could give anybody, okay? Once you're at this stage, now we're gonna move into the actual painting process, okay? What I will do is I will open this book up and I will get a sheet. Uh, this is the Kilimanjaro right here of uh, the 10 by five and a half. It's a watercolor paper and sketch paper. So what I will do is I will put this here and then I will have an area that I can look at my drawing here, my black and white. And then I can, what I'll do here is I'll just start right here. We're gonna do a little we're going to do a little color value here, but what I want to do to get set up for that, I want to draw a window the same size as this. Okay, now the next step will be the actual application of paint on the paper.